Hi, everyone. So today we have Hugo um, Melodeki. I always forget how to say your name, sorry. Uh, a bidendri on, uh, who will be talking to us of, on a bidendriform automorphism of WQ Sim. So hello, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. Um, so I'm a PhD student in Paris, and I will talk about uh, Biden reform automorphism of WQSIM. Don't be afraid of this title. Uh, I will define every word of it, and I will start by the end by WQSIM. What is WQSIM? It is a Hopf algebra. Uh, I show to you some, some of them here. Uh, you might know a lot of them, like PBT for planar binary trees, the Hopf algebra of Loderonco, or SIM, QSIM, FQSIM for free quasi symmetric functions, or the Malvenuto Ottenauer Hopf algebra. Uh, if you know it, you, you know that it is based on permutations. And today I will speak about WQSIM, defined by Florent Hiver. Uh, my PhD supervisor, uh, uh, um, supervisor. and uh, it is based on packed words. Uh, and here is a definition of packed words. So it's a word uh, on the alphabet of integer alphabet, and uh, we said that a word is packed if all the letters from one to its maximum appears at least once. Um, maybe I, I didn't say it, uh, but if you have questions, I can't see the chat, so uh, may, maybe use your mic or use the chat and maybe someone like Aram can say, but don't hesitate to interrupt me during the talk if you have questions. Okay. Yeah, so, if you write in chat, I can, I can say it verbally if you don't want to verbally ask. So either way works. Thank you. Um, so uh, yes, uh, packed words. Um, let's just see uh, some packed words, the, the, the little one. Uh, we said that the empty word is a packed word by convention. Uh, the only word of size one is the word one. Uh, of size two, we have one, two, two, one, and one, one. Uh, just so you know, the word two, two isn't a packed word because uh, the letters one doesn't appear uh, in the word two, two. So it is not a packed word. And uh, for the five, three, we got uh, 13 words. So we got the six permutations. We got six words with only one and two. And we got one word with only one. Uh, and so on, we have a uh, 50, uh, 75, sorry, uh, of size four and, and then. Okay, so um, now I just want to explain you, to, to, to show you a function uh, that is called pack, packing or like inference is a tassement. So we will pack a word that is not pack. Uh, so here is a word that is not a packed word because there is no three in it. And with this function, we will pack it in order to get a packed word. And in my talk, I will use this representation with matrices here in Cartesian coordin coordination. So here on the left, we have that two, four, one, five, four. And here we have the representation and if we want to get a packed word, we don't want empty lines. So we just remove them. And here we get a packed word on the right. So you see that uh, the four, all the four became three and all the five became four and so on. So that's how we get a packed word from uh, a word that is not packed. OK, so. Uh, what I what is about WQSIM? WQSIM is a Hopf algebra on packed words. So 
what do we want to do is uh, to 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 deal with uh, linear combinations of packed words. So here is an example. And just to be clearer, we will use a letter to, to fix that. OK, on, on the right uh, of the letter is the packed word, and on the left is the coefficient. Uh, so here we have a, a combination a combination of uh, four packed words. Uh, OK, and what makes it a Hopf algebra is that there is a product here. So if, if you have two elements of the algebra, uh, you can uh, multiply them. Uh, so you, you get uh, a linear combination of packed words of elements of the algebra. Uh, so if you know uh, it is a shifted shuffle product, if you don't know, it's not a big deal. We will not speak about it uh, more today. Um, and there is an another uh, thing, another dual thing about the product is the coproduct. So the coproduct is a way to um, disassemble elements of the algebra in, uh, in pairs of elements. So here we have one element of the algebra. And if and when we do the coproduct of this element, we get a, a combination a linear combination of pairs of element of the algebra. So here we have two elements of the algebra, two elements, two elements, and so on. This product is associative, this coproduct is co-associative, and to make it a Hopf algebra, we need a relation that is, OK, if you have two elements, you multiply them, and then you co-multiply them. You get the same thing that you co-multiply the first element, you co-multiply the second element, and then you multiply uh, everything. So that's the definition of a Hopf algebra and of WQC, the Hopf algebra that we will speak about today. OK, <clears throat> now we have some other words in the title, which are a bidendry form automorphism. So we have a notion that is important here is the notion of duality, because we want some uh, an, auto an automorphism. So we want um, something about the dual of the algebra. So we will call it W cosim dual with a, a little star. And here I just show you some examples of one basis. So R is one basis of the algebra W cosim. And after that, we will see a basis of the dual uh, of W cosim. And, and today, I just want to focus on the coproduct. So we will see two different coproducts, one on the basis R um, and one on the basis Q, which is the dual of it. So a coproduct, as I said, is a way to, uh, to get a... Uh, yes. John has a question. He's asking, um, are there known cancellation-free formulas for the antipode of the Hoff algebra WQ sim evaluated at a given basis element? Um, I, I know that uh, for uh, Hopf algebras that are graduated, uh, the antipode is, uh, is known, uh, but actually I, I haven't uh, worked on it. So uh, I, I know that there, there is some a, a formula uh, for every Hopf algebra that are graduated, but actually I, I, I just know that. So so sorry if if I can't uh, give you uh, a better answer. Nantel agrees with you. Uh, and then John, is that okay or? Yes, thank you. No, I don't agree. I, well, I agree, but there are some nice bases that, for which the antipode is cancellation free, not this one, that's all. Oh, yeah. okay, I thought you were agreeing with 
Excuse me. My fault. Sorry. <laughs> I was saying yes to the question. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, uh, Nontel, for for helping me. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, what I wanted to explain now is the um, is uh, the co-product, yes, of the basis R. So um, the co-product, how to get some uh, pairs uh, from a word. We will use the concatenation, and as I said, reduced the concatenation is because I had a constraint, which is I can't cut between two letters that are equals. So here, I can't cut between the two, two. So if I want to cut everywhere that is possible uh, with this constraint, we got before the word, and then after the second two, then between the three and the one, and then after the last one, after the word. And what we say is that, so the co-product of R of this word is the empty word and the word uh, himself, itself. And OK, I will detail a, a bit more for this one. We just separate the two words. And now we just remove the empty lines. So we use the, the pack, the packing that we, we saw earlier. We got one, two, one, and two, one. So we got this pair of elements. And we do it for all the other elements. And we got this uh, liner combination uh, of a pair of elements. So that's the co-product of this basis. And now I will do something a little different, but you, you will see some similarities because we will see uh, in the dual basis. So here is another example. And as we as we see just before, we cut uh, vertically uh, in the word uh, for the concatenation. And here, for the dual, we will cut horizontally in the word. So under the word, and then above the one, above the two, above the three, above the four, and if there were five above it, and so on. So we get all those five elements, and as so the same thing uh, as for the the first basis here in the dual basis we get that this co-product is equal to so the first element is the empty word and the word it itself. Here we will not uh, remove empty lines, but we will remove empty columns. So we just separate the two elements and then remove empty columns. The word in which is uh, under will go to the left and the word above will go to the right and so on. So we got after that we got two one and two one and then we got um, two, two one three and one and so on. Okay, so here we had a notion of duality that wasn't very clear, but I, I need you to believe me that the two bases are, uh, so R uh, is the basis of WQSIM and is one basis of WQSIM and Q is one basis of WQSIM dual. And actually there's two bases R dual of each other. So that's, Actually, my, my purpose is to uh, to find a morphism between R and Q, those two bases. So that's what I will explain now. Actually, uh, it it was conjectured by Duchamp and Vertibon in 2001, and in 2005, Foissy demonstrated that uh, every bidentary form B algebra is self-dual by a rigidity uh, theorem that we will see uh, later. But there wasn't any explicit isomorphism. So 
actually, my job was to find an explicit isomorphism for this algebra. OK. Now we have two new terms, so Biden reform by algebra. And what is it about? It is um, the, the fact that the product and the coproduct can be separate in half. So as I didn't uh, define the, the product here, I will just uh, show you on the coproduct. So here I have another example uh, of coproduct. I just write the reduced coproduct, so I, I erase the trivial terms with the empty world. So that's why I, I put a, a, a tilde on the delta. And what we can do uh, with this coproduct is to see where the maximum of the initial world is in the two pair, in the two elements, so in the pair of, uh, of elements. So for example, here, the maximum are five, five. So as we can't cut between the two five, the, the death letters will always be on the right or on the left, but all together. And as we can see in all these three terms, here it is on the right for the first term, and for the, the second and the third, it is on the left. So we just write it like that, that the left coproduct of this element is where the maximum is on the left side, and the right coproduct of this element is where the maximum is on the right side. So that's uh, a way to cut in half this coproduct that I show you just before, the, the deconcatenation reduced. And OK, we have uh, big formulas just like that. But what is important is that for the dual way, for the dual coproduct, uh, I didn't wrote it, I, I think, but uh, here we we are focusing on the maximum value, and for the dual, we will focus on the last letter of the word. So just imagine that for the dual, actually, you just uh, spin your head of uh, uh, a quarter, you know, so of uh, 80 degrees. And when you, you cut vertically and focus on the maximum letter, if you turn your head, you will cut horizontally and focus on the last letter. Okay. So, um, actually, a Biden reform by algebra, it is a little bit more than that, of course. So uh, when we got the product that is associative and the coproduct that is co-associative, we have uh, one equation for the associativity and one equation for the co-associativity. Here, we have a refinement. So we have three equations for as associativity because we have two half products. And we have three equations for co-associativity because we have two half co-products. And then we have four equations for the uh, refinement of the Hopf algebra because we got two, pro two half products and two half co-products that we want to, to, and we want that each of them have a relation that is a refinement of the Hopf relation. If you remember, it's when you, you have two elements, you can multiply them and then co-multiply or co-multiply each one and then multiply. Okay, so here we have four equations. I will not say more than that uh, today. If it's uh, if uh, so, if you are interested, uh, you can ask me later. And um, so the 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 main result uh, of Foisy, uh that everything is based on for after is that uh, if 
a hop algebra is a bidonary form by algebra. So if we can cut the product in two half and the coproducts in two half that are in a good way, then it is freely generated by the totally primitive elements as a bidonary as a dendry form algebra. So what is important here, here it is that it is freely generated by some elements of the algebra. And there's, a, there's elements, the, it is very interesting that the, um, the power series, the Hilbert series, uh, is known only with the, we only need the, the, the Hilbert series of the algebra to know the dimension of the, the totally primitive elements. So that, that says that, uh, if we have a bidonary form by algebra, we know how many totally primitive elements there are, and we know that if we got them, then they freely generated, they freely generate the whole algebra. So that's a very rigid theorem that mm, that means a, a lot of things because the freely generation means uh, that everything is based on the totally primitive element. So we also get that, of course, WQC is subdual because, as I said, everything is based on the dimension and the dimension of WQC are exactly the same of WQC dual because they are both based on packed words. So this algebra, WQC, is self-dual. What I didn't explain here is what is what are totally primitive elements. Uh, it's just the next slide, so don't be afraid. Um, and, and you will see that it is, well, let, let's just go to it. Just before, we need to know what is a primitive element. So a primitive element is where the coproduct the reduced coproduct is equal to zero. So when the coproduct is equal to only the trivial, the uh, not primitive, but uh, trivial terms, yes. And here is an example. Uh, if we do the coproduct of each element, we get uh, this one, we get this, and just to be sure, we, we have that the two half coproducts are uh, opposed. So one is equal to the opposite of, of the other, the opposite of the other. Um, and the totally primitive elements, it's when the two half coproducts are equal to zero. So here is an, in another example because the, the first one here isn't a totally primitive element because the um, they are around equals to zero, the, the half products. But here, if we do the, the coproducts of the four terms, we get, we get that and we can see that for the first column here, uh, it is equals to zero. And then here, uh, it is also equals to zero. May I ask a question, Hugo? Yes, of course. Uh... So, what's the difference between primitive and totally primitive? Um, you, you, by by difference, you you mean? Um, is there is it just because you are in a dendry form algebra and then you want to say this equal that, or it's the same as primitive? Well. Um, Primitive elements, actually, uh, so uh, for if we come back to, to the, the previous theorem, we got that primitive elements freely generate the algebra as um, word algebra. Uh, uh, um, I, I don't remember, but, but it, it, it also um, generates uh, freely, you also uh, freely generate uh, the whole algebra, but um, actually 
here, we can see that uh, all totally primitive elements are primitive elements, but yeah. the opposite is not true. So we have a smaller um, a smaller uh, set that generates freely the whole algebra. So can you just give me an example of something that is totally primitive but not primitive? No, no, no. Uh, uh, it, no. it is the opposite. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, is that, can you give me an example of something that is primitive but not totally primitive? The first one, so here. Uh, which, can you point the first one? Uh, so the, oh. the one, two, one, three, minus two, three, two, one. So this element, yes. um, so the, 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 the sum of the two elements, so the, the maybe difference. the difference of the two elements, is a primitive element because so the coproduct of this one and the coproduct of this one, they are equals. So the difference is equal to zero. Yes. But the half right coproduct is equal to one to one and one. And okay. uh, so here the totally primitive, you are really asking that the halves are zero. I see. Okay. Thank yes, you. that's it. Yeah. So I, I have a, a little uh, checkup. So what we what I explain here is that so my goal is to get an explicit binary form isomorphism between WQCM and its dual. And thanks to Foisy, it is equivalent to say that we want uh, an explicit isomorphism between totally primitive elements of WQCM and its dual. And what I did is uh, that I construct two bases of primitive elements, totally primitive elements, sorry, for WQCM and its dual. And uh, as maybe don't reform, the, the term don't reform uh, uh, tells you is that we will use some trees and not uh, some trees that you have so, so um, this kind of trees here, that I call, uh, I call them B plan trees. I will just explain that. Uh, so just here you have uh, uh, six different trees uh, in three categories. So the first line is skeletons, then we have pack trees, then we have bicolor trees. And on the left side, we have uh, red uh, skeleton, red pack trees, and by color that begins with red. And on the right side, we have blue. So uh, blue skeleton, blue pack trees, blue by color trees. And we will see that all these six trees are in bijection with the same packed word, actually. So we will see that in just a second. Um, I just want to explain what is a biplan tree. A biplan tree or biplan forest, well, a biplan forest is a, a sequence of biplan tree. And a biplan tree is, um, what is a, a biplan tree? It is a fusion between a binary tree and planar tree. So biplan for binary and planar, because um, we have, uh, a node of uh, a biplan tree have a right children and left children. So, and the, the children are forests of biplan tree. So, our biplan forest. So, a node have a left biplan forest as children and the right biplan forest as children. Okay, so it's a fusion between binary and planar. Okay, so let's go for. Uh... Wait, 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 wait. It's uh, it's not uh, clearly defined because um, I, there is echo. Uh, how do you know in which forest you belong? The right or the left? Actually, I I just uh, draw it on the left or on the right. For example, For example, you are second, second 
in coordinate uh, second second, second row first column. first column so one three so can one, be three both can the right the children right and the left, left children well uh, actually it is just draw on the on the right and uh, when when i code it i, I just put a, a separator here yes. so i separate uh, left children and right children so that would be two different tree by by by, by plan yes yes Okay, yes. thank you. Exactly. Okay. Do you have any other questions on bipantry? Okay. So um, I will show to you an algorithm to uh, get uh, these trees from packed words. Uh, I will start with the right side. Uh, so the two first red here and then the two blue there and at the end we will speak about bicolor trees okay so for the red side we'll start with the red skeleton on examples because i love examples and it is the best way to understand things when uh, we have a talk like that so this is a a, a patchword here on the right uh, with the representation that i used just before and I will show to you an algorithm. The first thing I do is to decompose through global descent. Uh, what is a global descent? It, actually, I want to, to cut it uh, vertically and horizontally in some way that uh, all the points are uh, on the uh, bottom top right and top left. So it is equivalent to say that the top right is empty and the bottom left is empty. So just like that. Um, and we separate the, the, the two factors and we pack it. So we remove the, the empty spaces. We get that. And we say that the forest uh, of this world of the forest of this big world is equal to the tree associated to this world here and the tree associated to this tree here. So it is a, a, a sequence of two trees, the one associated to the first and the one associated to the second. OK, we'll just um, forget about the, the little one for now. We will focus on the big world here. The second step uh, of this algorithm is to remove maximums. Why maximums? Actually, it is because, if you remember, the half coproduct uh, on the basis R, we focused on maximum. So that's why now I focus on maximum. I remove the maximums, and I just keep in mind that they were there. So I put a, a circle instead of a bullet. And now what I do is I do again a factorization in global descents. So I find all global descents in my in my world. So here I just left let you think maybe 10 seconds to to find them to find the global descents. Um, we look for One, global two. distance <laughs> that, uh, um, forgetting that uh, this maximum value is here. So there are four, four actually, four global descents. Oh, I thought I found only one, <laughs> but you're right. I see that. So here we are, we have four global descents on the, on the black points. For, for the black points, yes. And uh, what I want to do is to distinguish uh, two group of factors. The one where uh, that are after the first maximum we removed and the one that are before. So here, in this example, it is simple because uh, the maximum 
the first maximum that we see is here, the, the between the two, three. So we say that this two, three here and all the factors that are after, so all these factors are uh, on the right side and all the factors before, so the one corresponding to the six and the five, four, five are on the left side. So we just separate these groups and now we put back the maximums that we removed and we pack the two side. So we remove empty lines on the two sides. So on the left, we will get three, two, one, two. And on the right, we will get three, four, three, one, four, two, one. Okay. Okay, now let's just think what happened if we do all the steps, all this algorithm on this word here. So I just remind you, the first step is uh, global descent factorization. Then we remove the maximums, we global descent factorization again, distinction of two groups, we put back the maximums and we pack. But actually, if we do it on this word, what we get is this word again. So we said that this word is irreductible for this algorithm. We can't get a, a, a word that is smaller through this algorithm. So we said it, that it is red irreductible just because I, I, I want to put a, a color on it. And this red irreductible word will be uh, the label of a node. And the left forest of this node will be the forest associated to the word on the left. So we just write it like that. So this word is red irreductible. So red irreductible word are the words that are not decomposable through this algorithm. And here we just draw this node with this label, the, so the red irreductible word. And on the left side, we have the forest associated to the left side. And now we can loop and uh, get the skeleton of this uh, word. Why I use skeleton? Maybe we, maybe you, 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 well, maybe something you saw there is mm, weird because here you can't have right children. And so every trees and have only left children, so it sees actually planar trees. So because uh, there is no right side, but we will stay in this way. And actually that's why we use the skeleton term and we will see about the right side after. Okay, so if we look here for this word, three, two, one, two, uh, the first step is to global descent factorization and then for each side uh, we have the tree we, we have that the for each factor it is a tree so for the here the forest associated to three two one two is there's two trees and then we do the um, the maximum thing again and also for this tree we do it and we get that uh, we get that skeleton forest okay and what is very interesting about this red, red irreductible is that the number of red irreductible words is equal to the dimension of totally primitive elements of the algebra and that's very cool why because if 
we know uh, a basis of totally primitive elements. We can do a bijection between these bases and red irreducible words, and then we will have a basis of the whole algebra. We just do it like that. I will not detail all these calculs. So here, the first line is the initialization. That's just that. And then if we have a forest, we have some expression to get uh, element of the algebra. And if we have a tree, a skeleton tree, we get uh, another formula. The only thing that remains is for the um, to get a, a basis of totally primitive elements. OK, and that's exactly what the right side of uh, red tree, of red pack trees do. OK, so let's focus on the right side of uh, we, we, we start from the red skeleton. So this is the same word as before. We have this red skeleton. We know that all the three words that are here are red irreducible words because red uh, skeleton, all the nodes are labeled by red irreducible words. And now we will focus uh, again on maximums, uh, but on positions of maximums. So for each word in each node, we look at the position of the maximums. So here for, for the first is one, for the two, one, two is the position are one and three. And for the, the word here, the maximum are position two and five. So we'll, we just have this as a new level of the node. And what remains of the world will be the right children. OK? So I just do it, do it, do it step by step here. We have that, for example, the, the, the word that here was uh, in the root, uh, the maximum in position two and five. So we wrote two, five, and then the right children is the forest associated to the rest of the world. So three, three, one, two, one, which is that. And then, of course, we do it again. So we loop on, on that algorithm. So we global factorization, uh, global descent factorization, then the maximum thing, then we have the skeleton. And when we have the skeleton, we do again maximum position and so on. And at least we get this uh, red forest where um, nodes are labeled uh, with uh, integers, list of integers. Uh, actually, it, it means that it is position of maximum of some word. So that's what we get. And the thing that is really interesting is that uh, we, I, I just, um, in my work, I define this operation phi based, uh, which use only the label i, so the, the only the, the list of integers in label. And it is an operation that on uh, uh, an element uh, of on a forest here, I apply this, and the thing is that I have here a basis of totally primitive elements. I just show you an example here. So on a little forest, uh, there are elements uh, of the on the linear combinations, but the main theorem is that here all the trees on this form, so all the all the trees that where the skeleton is only one node here, it is a basis of totally primitive elements. And as I get that, I can build a basis of primitive elements. So it's only trees on, uh, uh, on this basis. And then we get the whole algebra uh, with forests. So that is the main theorem. 
for the for the first part so for, for the for the for the um, for the primal algebra for wqc okay now i will do exactly the same but on the dual side so everything was about uh, deconcatenation and not deconcatenation it was about uh, maximums and everything was red now everything will be about the last letter and everything will be blue okay i will do it quickly as it is exactly the same so here we get a word a big word the first thing is global descent factorization a little thing that is uh, conventional is that we need a swap uh, here we focus on the big word now we remove the last letter here and what we do again is global descent factorization there we got three factors and if you remember the next step is distinctions of two groups here we will have the group where uh, in the line uh, we will have the the last letter actually it is necessary the first factor Maybe I'll, I let you prove that on every word. It is necessarily in the first factor. So we will distinguish the first factor and all the other, just like that. This part here will be a blue irreductible word. So we put back the, the one that we have here. And what is under the separation will be on the left. And we write it just like that. This word, which is blue irreductible in the node, and the left children is this forest, the forest associated to this word. And again, we can loop and get, get this tree. And again, also, we have that the number of blue irreductible words are equal to the number of red irreductible words and equal to the dimension of totally primitive elements. So just as before, if we know a basis of totally primitive elements of the dual side, here we have the same expressions, uh, but the, initial, the initialization is on Q because we are on the dual side. So now focus on the right side of the tree, the right part of the tree, the right children. Let's go. We remove again the last letter and we ask a question. The question is that is the last letter appears in the rest of the world? So here on the first word, which is only one, the rest of the, only the rest of the world is uh, the empty world, so there is no other one. Here there is another two, and here there is another one. So the answer is yes for the this word and this word, and the answer is no for the first word. Okay, now the label of a node of a blue pack tree will be the value of the last letter, and a boolean which is true or false for this question we will symbolize it by a bullet or a circle just like that and again we loop uh, on the on the rest of the world which will be the right children okay i i do it quickly for this part here and now i i will just explain it uh, one last time for this part for the three four three one four two okay uh, we erase we remove the last letter we look for global descent factorization there isn't any okay so that's interesting is there another two on in the rest of the world the answer is no 
that is interesting. So the label will be two and a circle. And then the right children will be the, the tree associated to the rest of the world. Of course, we need to pack the rest of the world because there is no uh, other two. So we, we pack the three that became two, the four became a three, the three became a two, and the four here became a three. And so on, we get this tree, which is not very similar to the red tree, but also it is a biplane tree. So it is, uh, well, labels in the nodes are a little different, so that's why uh, the trees are the tree's shape are a little different. Okay, the same thing as before. I, I build a, a, an operation here on elements of the algebra uh, that that are that use the the label, so the integer and the boolean. And the thing is that here we have a basis of totally primitive elements of the dual of W cuisine. Just here, another example. Hugo, just yeah. a heads up. Yes. It's uh, almost time, so probably find a nice place to wrap up if that's okay. Okay, okay. Um, I will, I will shut the the end. Okay. So um, here is the main theorem. So exactly the, the same as before. And the thing is that uh, with there's two bases. Uh, the rigidity theorem said that uh, if we uh, recolor the skeleton, only the skeleton, uh, any bijection on red and blue irreductible world is fine. Uh, but the right side is not clear at all for, for now. So what I did is bicolor trees. I will short it, so I will do it very quickly. Here is another example. Actually, it is the blue skeleton of this big world. And for each node, the right children will be, will be the red skeleton of, uh, of the world. So I do just like that. I do the, the blue skeleton for each node, the right children will be a red skeleton. And I loop again, so it is very recursively thing. Uh, I have a stop condition that uh, it is that a root can't have right children uh, if it becomes from a, 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 a black edge. And at the end, we get this tree. And if we recolorize every edges that are blue and red in the other color, we get this tree that is very similar, just the color is different. And the tree is associated to another world. And actually, this gives uh, a bijection between uh, element of uh, uh, on basis Q and P, uh, on basis, sorry, P and uh, O, yes. O and P are the, the, the basis of, uh, of uh, on trees. Um, and so this. Uh, so I, I don't give any details, any more details here, but it gives uh, the, the the isomorphism, the boundary form isomorphism that we look f we looked for uh, between WQCM and WQCM dual. Thank you for your attention. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Hugo. Uh, let's thank hey. the speaker. <laughs> lame. You applaud. You applaud or lame? Huh? The applaud didn't work well. Well, because you started talking, it doesn't show up if other people talk. If oh, you... lame. <laughs> Here, we'll try again. Are you? <laughs> okay. Yay! Was that better, Nantel? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if other people talk, it cuts it off. And oh, so that's what happened. Uh, 
Um, are there any questions? I know a question, but it's uh, it's great. I've learned something. <laughs> uh, I think Mike has a question. Yeah, yeah. So your um, bijection then between the O and the P, I guess you can extend to something between the R and the Q if you wanted, right? Well, uh, I got a bijection between R and P. I got a bijection between Q and O. And as I have a bijection between P and O, I can get from R to Q through P and O. And I don't suppose you've calculated this. Is it, is it at all natural? Uh, well, it is natural from O to P. Uh, it is uh, a one one thing, so it is very natural. But from R to Q, it is very weird. Uh, it is not natural at all. Uh, I, 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 I mean, I didn't find uh, uh, another natural way to explain that uh, I go through P and O. Right. Would you want to 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 be able to do that? I mean, is it or is it just it just looks bad? It's not. It's not at all combinatorial. Um. I, I'm uh, well. It, it is combinatorial the, in, in the way that uh, all the all the construction of the basis P are based on uh, these trees, and uh, so the actually these trees uh, only means um, uh, some uh, operation on element of the algebra. So that in that way it is combinatorial, but. Yes, so if we have a matrix of uh, from R to Q, it is just, okay, we, we, we don't understand it more than there, is, there are positive integers in it. The, the problem, uh, Mike, is that at one point it stopped being natural in the sense that it depends on the labeling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then so, I... Um, I don't know. Have you implemented this in Sage, and have you pushed that to the? Yes. Yes, I, I have everything <laughs> implemented. Guy, in... Those guys are so Sage. -minded. You have it implemented, but have you like made it publicly available so that the rest of it? Uh, not yet. Uh... <laughs> um. No, so not yet. But uh, I, I can share it in some way, but it is a, so a, a lot of things are not uh, commented, so not a uh, documentary, so. Difficult. I'm, I'm just wondering yeah. If, if, yeah, if it's built on the, the word quasi-symmetric function code that's in Sage already. And... Um, yes, uh, I, yes, it is, yeah, b because the, the, uh, um, the basis Q is uh, in Sage, so I, I start from there. But they have a different name or? No, it, it, it has the name Q, yes. It's your basis, Mike. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but thank you. The only thing is that I, I also use uh, packed words instead of uh, other uh, partition no ordered uh, uh, ordered partition set yes uh, I, um, so for, for this you go I often I, I don't know if I mentioned that to you but you know like when you go to when you dualize things for example if you are on permutation when you dualize you take the inverse and the yeah. inverse of a permutation is you swap the you know like you write a permutation in two line notation and then you swap mm -hmm. yes and you also get a, a permutation and but you for, also get a permutation but if you take a part well, we get, we and get you an swap, ordered partition set. yes you get an ordered partition so it's natural to order the dual by ordered partition yes and actually i i tried to 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 redo some so to 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 think like that and to uh, but 
but your I, advisor, I your advisor is too biased. <laughs> No, it's, it's also the, the, the thing that uh, it is in SAGE very difficult to, to, to do both, you know, like to, to say to SAGE that uh, this is based on, this, is, this uses the order of partition set and this password and this is the same thing. Mm. So this is very difficult. So yeah, I did it in one way. And that's why I am on this way. So Mike, in Sage, you should implement that inverse function. Between it it exists, uh, I think. Between packword and... Uh, it, it, it is... Uh, 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 it is I, I, uh, actually, I, I have a, a ticket on site for packwords. Uh, it is not... Uh, finished. Uh, I mean, it is uh, in a need work uh, situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I just need to 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 finish it. But this there's two functions are uh, on this ticket. So uh, I mean, two functions because uh, yeah, one way, uh, one way and another is totally different. Yes. Cool. That, nice. Thank you. Thank are you. Are there any other questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again.